Oh, well, I'll start recording. I was thinking of live streaming this, but I think I will record this. So it's 1.40 p.m. Oh, it just turned 1.41 p.m. And I'm 41. <laughs> 1 February 2020. So, uh, uh, I did take a shower. Did I take a shower? Oh, no, no, I, I shaved my face. Shaved my, that's why it is not shaved. Uh, so, you, you know, my, my weight, like, I don't, I used to measure my weight, like, every morning, but then I stopped doing it because I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. <clears throat> so I've started measuring it every month. So this month, uh, February 1, my weight was exactly 69. <laughs> it was exactly 69. 69. And, uh, and I started recording at 141. Now I'm, it's 142. I'm going to be 42 this year. Oh no. What are all these numbers? All these numbers. Uh, anyway, so... I want to like, uh, where is my stupid mic? Oh, is the mic even working? Oh, okay. Yeah, today's going to be a very, very hard day. <laughs> so, um, so you know how I was, uh, I was thinking about this question of can a government contracted company uh, sue for defamation. Can a government contract your company sue for defamation? Uh, because uh, this is obviously the government cannot sue for, like if I criticize the government, if I criticize a government body like a local council, they cannot sue me because um, I think it's, in the, uh, um, I think I think the public interest issue where the people, the body politic should have the right to uh, hold government decisions and actions to account by uh, airing grievances in the public because the government is a public body, thereby you can publicly criticize it. That's, that seems like a common sense thing to me. I don't know if that's a real reason, uh, but, but, a, but a company uh, but if the government contracts out some of its services, that services like, for instance, uh, any service that the government does, like uh, social service, if the government contracts some of those services or all of those services to private corporations, private companies, the question I have is, can, and, and, and if I or someone else uh, criticizes the private company for the way it is carrying out its uh, the service contracted it to it by the government can that private company sue me for defamation and this is an important issue this is an important question or it's a public uh, it's a question of public importance because obviously the the if the government did it, I could criticize it, but if the private company is doing what the government is supposed to do, I should be able to criticize the private corporation as well, right? The private company. That just makes logical sense to me. But I don't, I didn't know, I, but I was uh, like, I had a question about this. So I sent an email to Sonic Health Plus and I put for, put to them this particular question. Uh, I asked them, can uh, can Sonic Health Plus sue uh, a private, or sue a person who, for instance, like me, uh, I don't know, if that, it's not exactly how I wrote it, but can, can Sonic Health Plus sue uh, uh, a person referred to them by Centrelink for disability medical assessment uh, uh, for defamation? Can Sonic Health Plus sue for defamation if such a person publicly expressed comments that were critical of the manner in which conducted those assessments. And I think that's a relevant 
question, so I sent an email to them uh, about that, and hopefully uh, they will respond to me in a timely and uh, accurate manner. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's worth asking. I don't know if how many people have thought about it. Uh, I think that's a very important question uh, because we because. Uh, we should be able to criticize governmental services. So the government cannot get away from criticism by uh, offloading these services to private corporations. And uh, there's another, you know how they use the term government contracted doctor? Um, so the, the person who is going to do the assessment is a government contracted doctor that's the phrase they use but sonic health plus is not is in my what i understand them to be is like they're like this kind of a network where they seem to like uh they what they seem to do is like a middle <laughs> a middleman where the government uh, sends the referral to them and then they uh choose one of these doctors and then they ref, uh, uh, to do the assessment or something like like so th I feel like they're like this is my understanding is like they're like a middleman who's going to get the doctor to do the assessment, and uh, apparently that auditor general report was talking about like how there has to be a lot of like the, the doctors who want to do these assess assessments they have to apply, uh, I think to the Sonic Health Plus or to the government they have to apply to become. Uh, uh, assessors or something and anyway uh, and they were like these uh, like sometimes even the government can send link for instance can or the whatever uh, department can sort of if the, if the government approved doctor is sent in a report and the, the report can be deemed unsatisfactory for instance and they can be sent back so there were all these things uh, like like that were referred to in that auditor general report, but I, I didn't really read the report. I just sort of, you know, some points here and there, because I find it difficult to read things and concentrate and focus. <sighs> Stressful. Anyway, um, and another thing, I also wrote another extended complaint to, and I know I'm very complaining a lot, I'm complaining a lot. I mean, these are things that I like. I, 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 I think, you know, um, I used to be like very like, uh, I, I didn't really question anything the government did. I was like, oh, the government is like this, the, the, the guy in the sky. You can't question the guy in the sky. The guy in the sky knows everything. The guy in the sky knows what it's doing. So I'm like, I just sort of deferred everything to the guy in the sky, the government. And I, I used to just like not question it at all because I was afraid. I was afraid of questioning government action. I was afraid of authority. Uh, but now I'm taking a different approach, which may be a result of me gaining some knowledge and insight, but also maybe my psychological, um, maybe I, I just uh, you know got frustrated or fed up with being this kind of, I, I think I've lived in, like this very powerless person for such a long time. I felt like I didn't have any agency. And I, I wouldn't have known this years ago, but right now, like I'm just sort of maybe I'm just sort of sort of changing. I'm not changing as a person. But what I'm changing is like maybe I do want to um, behave like a person who has actual agency to choose for themselves and make uh, decisions that affect my life, and you know, obviously be held accountable for those decisions as well. But you know, I want to behave like a person with agency and not as a disempowered individual who is subject to the whim of other people's uh, decisions and life and fate. I, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to be acted upon all the time. I want to also push back and act for myself as well. Speak up for myself. Advocate. Uh, ad advocate on my behalf that's right uh, they have these sites where saying you want you know you want to be an advocate for yourself so even if you have a disability uh, there is this is a site I'm, I'm, it's like a disability site where they say, how do you advocate be and be your own advocate so I'm like trying to be my own advocate <clears throat> so 
I feel like, you know, the Centrelink, uh, I don't know why they referred me to this disability medical assessment. Um, why did they do that? And it, it, I feel like the, uh, uh, so in, in this complaint, I, wrote, I feel like uh, the person who is handling my case is actually uh, like might be acting against my interest. They might be biased against me or they might not understand mental health issues very well because a lot of people, you know, don't understand mental health. So um, because, for instance, why did they uh, refer me to the job capacity assessment? And the very next day, it's like the very next day, I got this call from Sonic Health Plus saying, you know, we, they were referred to a disability medical assessment. Why did that happen? For instance, if the Centrelink officer had questions regarding the medical evidence I presented, if they thought this was not valid or this was insufficient, don't you think the first thing they should have done was actually make an appointment for the disability medical assessment? Don't you think that would be more, more it sound, don't you think that's more reasonable and fair? Like why subject me to the job capacity assessment and then you subject, subject me to the medical assessment? Why do that? I don't get that, I don't get that. Because, I don't get it, I, I think like, uh, it just seems to me like they just want, they just want, they just trying to make it difficult for me to get, uh, get this application processed. Because and I asked them, what's the difference between a job capacity assessment and a disability medical assessment? What's the difference? You know, I mean, the the job capacity assessment was conducted by a psychologist who I think is, I think when I talked to her, she just she said like, oh, she was like an independent, supposed to be independent. I said it was like a 35 minute interview. It wasn't like a short interview, it was 35 minutes or 36 minutes, I don't know, 35. Let me not be, oh, I'm going to be pedantic over here. Let me see. <laughs> I'm going to be pedantic. I'm going to be pedantic. I am going to be pedantic. What the fuck? Oh, 35 minutes, all right. <clears throat> so yeah, so it was like, it was like a, you know, it was like a, not like a short interview. Uh, so even this disability medical assessment is supposed to be like one hour. So it's not like, I mean, she took some good notes down. So my point is given like all, given her report, given all the evidence I presented and given the history of me having these medical issues, uh, you know, my Centrelink medical certificates, as well as other job capacity assessments I've done, as well as the fact that I applied for a disability support pension like years ago uh, and the job capacity assessment done then. So there's a bunch, there's an overwhelming amount of evidence going back years and years, at least like going back until the previous job capacity, uh, capacity assessment. When was that held? Uh, I don't know, maybe. Uh, three, four years ago at the race. So there is a, there, I feel like there is a substantial, there is a, there is a good amount of evidence showing that I have problems here. And so I, I said, you know, uh, I want, this is my main issue was, I want the person who made the decision to refer me to the disability medical assessment. I want them to tell me why they did it. I know they have the right to do that, but what I want to know is, I want to tell them to tell me why. What is the reason? Why did you? Why did you decide to do it? Why did you do it? Uh, and this is like a, a, a something that even the auditor general mentioned in their uh, report was that they're apparently Centrelink or whatever the Department of Human Services they don't have sufficient monitoring mechanisms uh, to ensure that staff are communicating their decisions or access decisions to the to prospective applicants in a, in a sufficient manner. Maybe that refers to the final decision. Maybe that refers to like if someone says, okay, uh, if someone rejects my claim, then they have to explain. But I, in my opinion, even making like these process decisions, such as referring me to various appointments, I think there should be sufficient uh, basis for that as well because I think if, if if they don't provide reasons they can abuse it for instance like like for instance someone may not, may not want to give uh, maybe motivated by some kind of uh, performance incentive then maybe they want to uh, you know reduce the number of applications so they might uh, try and uh, you know 
make it difficult for me to get the pension by telling me to go here and here. And I just don't think that that kind of, uh, you know, if, they, if they're not uh, asked to qualify their decisions, they can abuse it. You know, they can, if someone can just press a button and say, all right, you go here. I mean, that's not right. No, if you're going to tell me to go to some appointment, you better have a good reason for doing it because going to that appointment is not like a, uh, you know, it's not like it's something that's very effortless for me. It costs me a lot to go there. I'm not talking about money necessarily. I'm also talking about my mental health, my, you know, all of that stuff that goes into it. So I also, uh, you know, I also said now, if this person is not going to give any reasons, I want them, uh, you know, I want, uh, I want uh, someone, I want them to be admonished, <laughs> and I want uh, my case transferred to someone else who can, who's actually willing to uh, uh, provide me reasons, and who's, uh, who's maybe perhaps trained in mental health, because I, I don't, you know, a lot of people may not be sufficiently trained in mental health. So I, I spent a lot of time writing and I was like... <sighs> uh, the way I see it, like, you know, I am at this, at this point in my life, this is what's happening to me. And I feel like I should make the world a better place. And the way I can make the world a better place is by uh, dealing with these various institutions and people and questioning them and holding them to, to account so um, this is my contribution to making society a better place I don't have to like uh, invent the uh, next, next great thing even in the, my area of influence even where I am at this point in life I can do things like this because what my complaints may, who knows, it could lead to change in processes uh, whereby p other people don't have to go through the things I'm going through. You know what I mean? Uh, I can make my contributions in that way. Oh man, it's so hot today. Uh, I gotta make my register. I'll stop recording and I'll upload this. Please.